In the previous video, we covered combinatorics, fundamentals, factorials, permutations, word rearrangements, and many interesting examples. In this class, we're going to cover combinations. So the formula for combinations, n choose k, is n times n minus 1 all the way till n minus k plus 1 over k factorial. Now there's this other form, but it takes much more time, so I recommend you use this version, because it's much faster. An important thing to know is that n choose k equals n choose n minus k. This is important because if you end up in an expression like 37 choose 35, rather than having to do 37 times 36 times 35 all the way till some low numbers and do this giant multiplication, it's just equal to 37 choose 2, which is easy to evaluate. Next, there's probability. And that's just the chance. So it's just the desired outcomes over the total outcomes. Now let's take a look at an interesting probability example. A deck of 40 cards consists of four ones, four twos, four threes, and four tens. A matching pair, two cards of the same numbers, is removed from the deck. Given that these cards are not returned to the deck, let m over n be the probability that these two randomly selected cards also form a pair where m and n are relatively prime positive numbers. Okay, so let's just say that our first pair selected was a pair of 1s, let's say. It doesn't really matter. It could be 1s, 2s, whatever. But for the sake of simplicity, we'll just say there's 1s, which means that there's two 1s left, four 2s left, all the way till four 10s left. So now, how many, through probability, let's find the successful outcomes first. How many ways are there to have a pair of ones? That's just one because we have two ones left. There's only one pair you can make with them. Now, how many ways are there to have a pair of twos? Well, there's four cards that have twos on them. So we can just choose any two of them. Four, choose two. Same thing for threes. There's four of them. So four, choose two. All the way till tens. There's four, choose two. So in total, all the cards from 2 to 9, through to 10, there's 4 choose 2 ways. So this is just equal to 1 plus 4 choose 2 times 9, because there's 9 cards which have 9 numbers which have 4 cards left. And 4 choose 2 is just 4 times 3 divided by 2, which is 6. So 1 plus 6 times 9 equals 55. Now let's find the total number of outcomes possible. So total number of ways to select two cards from the remaining cards. We have 38 cards left because 40 cards, we remove two of them. So 38 choose two cards left. 32 choose two total ways outcomes. So that's the total outcomes term in our probability, which is 38 times 37 divided by two, which is 19 times 37. Now a mental math shortcut you can use is 37 times 20 is 740. 740 minus 37, 703. So the answer is 55 over 703, which we have to find m over n plus n, which is 758. Also, by the way, if you're interested in more of these basic concepts and formulas, be sure to check out the videos linked in the description. Okay, now let's move on to another interesting example that uses both combinations and probability. Each of 20 balls is tossed independently and at random into five bins. Let P be the probability that some bin ends up with three balls, another with five, and the other three with four balls each. Let Q be the probability that every bin has exactly four balls. What's P over Q? Let's start with Q. Okay, what is Q? Well, let's first find the number of ways which this is possible in, number of successful outcomes. So we have 20 total balls. So Let's see that we, let's just write, look at our bins like this to make it easier to understand. So we have to have four in each one, right? So there's 20 total balls. So we have 20 choose four ways for the first bin. And then after that, we have 16 balls left. So it's just 16 choose four for the second bin. And then after that, we have 12 balls left. So it's just 12 choose four. And then after that, eight, so 8 left, so 8 choose 4 for the 4th bin, because out of the 8 remaining, you must choose 4 of them. 
and then just four choose four, which is just one. And isn't, isn't that interesting how we can just use choose notation and separately choose four balls for each of the bins? And then it just becomes a simple expression in terms of choose rather than some complicated distribution problem. But remember, Q is probability. So how many total ways are there to divide 20 balls amongst five bins? It's random. So each of the 20 balls has five choices. It can go in any one of the five bins. It can, for example, it can go in the, bin, the first bin, the second bin, the third bin, the fourth bin, or the fifth bin. So there are five to the 20 choices because five choices for each bin. So five times five times five, 20 times, so five to the 20. So Q is just this over five to the 20. Now let's look at P. P is a little bit more complicated though. In P, we have to have one bin has three balls and one has five, and the others still have four. How many ways are there to do this? Well, 20 total balls, so we can just choose three of them for the first bin. From the remaining 17, we choose five of them for the second bin. From the remaining 12, we choose four of them for the third bin. And then from the remaining eight, we choose four. And from the last four, we just choose the last four. And that's just one because there's four, bin, four, four balls left and four spots for the four balls in the last bin. So four choose four. And again, we, we divide by five to the 20. That doesn't change. And we have to find P over Q. So we can just divide these terms together. But wait, is there anything we're missing? Well, remember, Q has to have one bin have three balls and one bin have five balls. Is there any orderings that we have to account for? Indeed, yes. Because not necessarily the first and second bins have three and five balls. Some bin ends up with three balls. Some bin ends up with five balls. It's not necessarily the first or the second bin. So now we have to choose an ordering for these bins which have three and five balls. And how many ways can we do that in? Well, this is just permutation. So now we're using previous concepts too. We have five choices for the first one, for the bin with, bin with three balls in it, because it can be any one of the five bins. And then after that, from the remaining four bins, we choose one of them to be the bin that contains five balls. So times five times four. And now, now we just have to divide them. And is there any simplifications we can do before we deal with mess, a little bit of algebra? Well, P over Q. Well, notice that these five to the 20 terms will just cancel out because they're in both of them. So we can just ignore these all together. And same thing with the 12 choose four, the eight choose four, the four choose four terms. They're in both of the, both P and Q. So P over Q will simplify to just five times four times 20 choose three times 17 choose five over 20 choose four, 16 choose four. Isn't that cool how all the terms just mostly cancel? And now this, we can just rewrite it in terms of our, in terms of the products of numbers, 20, 19, 18 over six. And uh, a key mistake might be to try and evaluate these right away, but you don't want to do that because things will always cancel. That's why I didn't evaluate any of these yet, because terms will always cancel. So 17 to 5, 17, 16, 15. Let me just move this here. Seventeen times sixteen times fifteen times fourteen times thirteen over five factorial. And then this is divided by twenty times nineteen, eighteen, seventeen over twenty-four, sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen over four factorial, twenty-four, right? And again, a ton of terms will cancel. In fact, almost all of them will. 20 cancels with 20, 19, 19, 18, 18, 17, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. Almost all of these terms cancel. And now let's just rearrange our denominators to get rid of them because we don't want to have double denominators. We can just take all, all of these terms here and move them to the numerator and take all these terms here and move them to the denominator. So just 20 times 24 times 24 
over 6 times 120 becomes 5. This becomes 4. So 4 fifths of 20 is just 16. And that is our answer. Now let me show you a quick shortcut solution, which might be a little tricky to find, but it's definitely a time saver. So we have 20 balls to divide between five bins, right? So we can notice that three of the bins have the same number of balls. So we can just directly see that let's, if we have the first two bins have five and three balls for, for P, and the first two bins have four and four balls for Q, then that's automatically, we just have to take those eight balls and set aside the other 12 for the other three bins. So just eight choose three for, the, for P, and then eight choose four for Q. And then on top of that, we multiply for by 20 for Q, for P, because there's five times four choices for the first, for the bins to have the five and three balls in them. And then we simplify this out to get the same answer. And this is a little bit of tricky, so don't worry if you don't understand it, but make sure you understand the idea of how chooses work. Basically, what we did was we, we took use choosing and cho choose the number of balls for each of the bins. And then after that, it all canceled and we're left with a nice simple answer of 16. Next, let's look at subsets. The number of subsets of a set of size n is 2 to the n. The reason this is true is because, let's say we have n elements, 1, 2, blah, 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 all the way till n, let's say. The number of subsets, well, for each element, there's two choices. It's either part of the subset or not part of the subset. So 2 to the n, that's it. Now, this is a very useful property that's useful in many combinatorics problems. Let's take one example of where it can be used. Two subsets of the set S equals A, B, C, D, E are to be chosen so that their union is S and their intersection contains exactly two elements. In how many ways can this be done? Assuming that the order in which subsets are chosen does not matter. Be careful about this part here. Okay, first, let's choose which two elements will be the intersection. We have five elements. Pick two of them to be the intersection. Five choose two equals 10, or five times four divided by two is 10. Next, we must divide the remaining three elements amongst the two subsets. So again, it doesn't matter here, but they're all symmetric. But let's say we pick A and B to be in the intersection. Now, we, we must divide these remaining three elements amongst two subsets. But those two subsets, none of the elements can overlap. So we cannot have C and D in one subset and D and E in the other subset. because Then they're overlapping because then D will also be part of the intersection. But the intersection only contains two elements, which we're saying is A and B, so no D. So from these remaining elements, C, D, and E, we must divide them amongst the two sets. Each one has two choices. It can either go in the one, the first subset, or the second subset, two cubed equals eight. Now, we, we, the reason it can't go in none of the subsets is because this is a union, and the union means all the elements that occur in either the subsets without duplicates. So therefore, one of these, each of these elements must mean at least one of the subsets. And we know C, D, and E can be in exactly one subset, so it's just two cubed, because two times two times two, which is eight. Now, is there anything else we're missing? The last line, the order in which the subsets are chosen does not matter. So we divide by two for symmetry because we can just flip the subsets. So eight times 10 divided by two equals 40. By the way, if you're interested in getting the material that I used in this video, be sure to subscribe to be notified when it's released. Now we're gonna move on to casework. So many counting and probability problems can be solved by dividing a problem into cases. And it's a very powerful tool on the AMCs. But if you want to learn about that, you'll have to check out the next video over here.